Welcome back to the Meeple Marathon, everybody. Today we're going to be continuing our coverage of Descent, Legends of the Dark. Today we're going to be starting a playthrough. Um, this is not the initial uh, scenario. It's not the introductory scenario. I wanted to show you guys something a little further down the line. <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you which one this is. I also, you can see, have skipped over all of the uh, story content. So. Hopefully this keeps it from being too spoilery. Obviously, you will encounter this scenario at some point if you plan on playing the game. Um, so there are spoilers involved with this. So please keep that in mind as we move forward. I am not going to give you any further warnings. So um, what I've gone ahead and done is, is set everything up to save time, set up my, my player characters and everything. But I do want to just touch briefly on um, some tips on, on how to what you need to accomplish to get the game set up now obviously the obvious thing is setting up the board setting up the map tiles and the, the 3d scenery which we can see here this is done by the app and is going to be different for um every single uh scenario one thing that um is mentioned in the rule book but um you know i do just want to point out because it does make a difference if you are creating the scenery and you're using the the height, you know, the pillars to create height. You want to make sure you are either when you are putting them all around a single piece, you're either using all of the ones with the gargoyle red eyes or the other ones because these actually do not line up uh, 100%. So your your uh, surface won't be level unless you make sure. And I'm pretty sure that's why the the gargoyle faces are there to make sure you're either using one or the other um, when you're setting them up. Um, but other than that, you know, you're basically following the instructions on the app to set up your map. <clears throat> the next thing, uh, obviously, you're going to want to do is set up your hero characters. And this is where I kind of want to focus my efforts here on is that, first of all, you want to make sure you have chosen your weapon. Um, as you advance further along in the game, you're going to see that you gain additional weapons and you can flop them out and you can see here for example the evergreen staff is not the starting weapon for cyrus but uh, it's not specifically stated anywhere but the app kind of forces you into choosing uh either in the, his case either a wand or a, a wand and a staff i could not go in with the crooked staff and the evergreen staff um, but you want to go ahead and make use of the sleeves that come in the game for those and then also you want to think about what am I going to be doing first in this case I'm probably going to want to attack someone from range I'm not in the thick of it yet so I'm going to start with my glimmering wand over here I'm going to start with my spear that has reach um, also you want to pay attention to your cards which side do I want to you know which special action do I want to have for my characters same thing with your skill cards remember everything here is double-sided um, your character cards your weapon cards because you sleeve them and your skill cards so think about where you want to uh, which weapon you want to start with because it costs you an action to flip them over now you can see here cyrus actually has some tokens already on his board that's because the story content allowed me to focus all of my cards this basically means i'm going to gain a uh, free reroll by just spending one of these tokens but if I flip the card before I spend it I lose it also this purple one is a prepared token that means that I can flip this for free without spending an action so if it says to prepare a card you don't have to flip it then you simply gain one of these prepared tokens and that means when you choose to you get to flip it for free again if I flipped it and this is still on there then I lose that token and I lose all the fatigue tokens also, when you are setting up the game in the app, it's going to ask you, that is the point where not only are you going to want to tell it which weapons you are choosing for your character, uh, it's also going to ask you which trinkets you want to take. And so these technically can sit in front of you, they don't have to, because all of this stuff is driven by the app. Uh, in this instance, Cirrus, the first time he cre uh, defeats a enemy of a specific type, he's going to create a gain a unique recipe. I only have two trinkets, so these are obviously the two I was going to give one to each. And Varix here gets the brew basket, which gives me a random consumable. What's awesome is that the app just chose it for me. That way I don't have to shuffle up my consumable cards. I can keep them in the order that you know I've gotten used to shuffling through them. I know where things are. And so really, these here are controlled by the app. I'm just keeping them in front of me because I have a space for them. 
then you're going to want to choose your armor. Now this is not uh, chosen, or you do not specifically choose this in the app. This is something that you're going to have to do physically in front of you. You do need to make sure you're following the rules. For example, my stalwart male here. Uh, oh, this is this is not the one I I grabbed the wrong one. Hold on. Yeah. I apologize. This is the one I want for Saris because this is light armor and he can only have light armor. Uh, whereas Varix here can handle light or medium armor, so Varix can handle the sieging doublet. But um, this really doesn't uh, give me anything right now. I just know that every time I go into defense, I can focus a card, which is great. So I'm going to have a lot of rerolls with this guy. Um, this one, however, is going to increase my starting health or my maximum health by one. That's what this symbol means. So I go from eight to nine here, but also at the start of each quest, set your health to four greater than its maximum. So I'm going to jump all the way up to 13 for Varix. Now, my maximum health is not 13. I just started up higher. You know, I've eaten a good meal or whatever, but my starting health is one greater because of this symbol. The antidote potion here, which you'll see me use at some point, I'm sure, is the random one I got from the brew basket. Again, this was chosen by the app. And my vigor potions here are what I have access to to bring with me. Now, you can bring with you three consumables. This one's flipped over. It shouldn't be. Um, you can bring with you three consumables, but at the beginning, you can only take with you what you have uh, crafted. So let's just real quick look over here at the app. And we can see if we go into my inventory here, you can see that I technically have one antidote potion, but this is going to go away most likely unless I gain the recipe by the end of the scenario. So I'm, I, there's no point in saving it. My vigor potion here, however, has always been here. So I'm, when I'm in the market phase, my vigor potion is there. And at the beginning of the game, when I'm setting up, it's there. So I know I can grab a vigor potion for each character. This last one here you can see is a recipe. It's got that brown box around it. I need rabbit foot potion and I need one anemos in order to create um, you know, rabbit foot potion. So I'm assuming that uh, I'm gonna need to gain rabbit foot potion at some point and then maybe not use it. This part of the uh, game is, it, it, there's a, a little bit left to be desired uh, in the instructions and in the glossary and things like that. So, but I do know that unless you have crafted it, um, you don't get access to a consumable. If you gain it uh, during a scenario, you just gain a single one. It goes away after that scenario. But then once you've crafted something, you can take it with you at the outset of each scenario. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, it's not explained very well in the rule book or the glossary. Um, I had to do a lot of searching on, on BGG to, to get you know official answers from everyone. But other than that, we're pretty much set up to go. You, you get your characters straight, their health dials set up, uh, have your tokens and your miniatures and everything else out, a set of dice. If you're playing solo like I've been playing, uh, at least as of now, I've yet to come across an instance where I'm not rolling anything more than a single blue, a single orange, and either a single or double black. So these are really all the dice you need, at least at the beginning. So, um, to play, it's very straightforward. Um, you have an option on your turn to take three actions, but one of those has to be a maneuver. So it's really just two actions and a move. But if you need to, you can move three times. Your movement value is right here. You can see four and three. It's the green arrows above our health. Um, and besides your move, you can explore. So you can explore like any of the 3D terrain. You'll do that on the app. If you can click on it, you can see here, um, you know, it's gonna give me a little bit of flavor text for all this stuff. Um, it appears that the only thing I can interact with, no, I can, there you go. So you, I, can, I can interact with all that stuff. Um, but that's using the explore action. Obviously, I can fight or attack an enemy. When you attack an enemy, you are simply going to roll uh, the die next to your weapon card. Or if you're defending, you're going to roll the die next to your shield here. So in Varix's case, it's uh, that 
for fighting and this for defending. Sirius here is orange for both. What I'm not a fan of, and they did this, they stepped away from this in Descent 2nd Edition, is the fact that this is not on my uh, weapon card. Why is my weapon die not on my weapon card? I guess maybe down the road some of the nicer weapons will give me, say, uh, you know, blue and an orange, a plus orange, which I think is supposed to happen. But this just seems weird to me that right now, no matter which weapon I choose, I'm still rolling the blue die. Now, obviously, the Iron Thorn War Bell hits for three apiece. Oh, so is the spear. That's a bad. This one hits for two. I think the other one maybe hits for one. But some of them, a lot of them, you, you're going to hit more with the melee weapon. Anyways, um, so we can move. We can explore. We can fight. You can also take a unique action. You can see here each character. Um, this is part of the reason why I chose these two because these, I believe right now, are the only two with these skill cards that give me unique actions. But Cyrus also has one here on his card. I can take that action as one of my three actions. The last thing you can do is ready a card. Like I said, my prepared token here is going to allow me to flip this card for free. When you flip a card, you remove all the fatigue from it. You also remove all the status effects from it. So if you are, if it's, you know, terrored, if you're terrified or if you're poisoned or something infected, um, that's a great way to flip them over. But the, you know, the actions are going to change. If it's your weapon, you obviously might lose like range, things like that. So knowing when to do that is part of the strategy of this version of Descent. That's it, however. Um, there is no heal action that is just a given. Uh, in Descent 2nd Edition, you could rest. Rest would remove your fatigue, but if you have removed your fatigue, all the excess rest removed or, or regained health. There is none of that in this game. Um, now, there was much more dying was more, or reducing your health to zero was much more, I guess, permanent in 2nd Edition. Here you get like basically three rounds of your health, but still, I've yet to, except maybe the introductory scenario, I think, made it through a scenario without taking heavy uh, at least one heavy wound on one of my characters so um we'll see about that but cyrus has some innate abilities to heal so hopefully he can get us through this all right so like i said it, it, there's not a whole lot to cover um without actually playing and showing you how things work in the app because again this is a uh, you need the app to play it's an app-based game one final thing I do want to show you guys, and I'm going to try and point this out as much as possible. If you look over here at the app, as I move around, you can see a very faint gray border uh, all the way around. If I zoom out, you can see it even better. This tells you where the map is going to grow. Uh, this is similar to the fog system in Journeys in Middle Earth, which I think worked a little better um, than this. This was not obvious at the four set, but that's why for example i have started way over here it looks like it's mostly going to grow this way it might grow into my characters or over there hopefully it doesn't but we'll see but take a look at that before you start setting up your building i've had some where it seemed like the best approach was to start in the middle and we just were going to grow outwards or sometimes i start here because it's going to get really wide so pay attention to that when you're setting up the game all right enough rambling from me let's go ahead and get started so it's my choice who i want to go first here so I think we're gonna start with uh, Cyrus and he's gonna go ahead and just take some shots at um, this, what is this guy's name called here? The Dread Zealot, that's quite hefty. Um, it's a level two for 27, whew. Uh, there really is hardly any one shot kills in this game. It's just not gonna happen. Um, all right, so we're going to one, two, three, four. Yes, I am four spaces away. So you can see on my glimmering wand here, I have a range of four. And that can be counted diagonally or orthogonally. So really, it's just one, two, three, four. This table does not block my line of sight or anything like that. I'm within four. So I can simply attack him for one of my three actions. To do so, I'm going to get my orange die. Uh, no matter where you are, if you're on this screen here, you can just drag this up. Or if you on the upper right there to look at just the enemies. You can drag it there. This is where the app needs to know which which weapon are you attacking with because it's gonna do all the calculations for you. I'm attacking with my wand and I'm rolling. All right, so I've got a star and two pluses. 
the two pluses I need to spend or take fatigue on in order to turn them into successes. Um, so when you're doing it, uh, when you're spending the pluses advantage, gaining advantage by taking on fatigue, you can put them on any card you choose. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put them here and here. Now, if I want to do, for example, this action, which is a free action, it's a fatigue action, per se, I can do two after your attack. Here I may shift two. Um, I need to put it directly on this card. So I didn't want to put both fatigue on this card um, because then I would not, my limit here is three. Um, so by putting one on it, I can still take two to shift if I want to. All right, but I've taken my two fatigue. So essentially I've gotten three here. Um, now that's an action. Here I can heal one for each. Um, so really not much else to add right now. So I'm just gonna go over here to the app. I'm gonna go one, two, three. Now this is not just gonna take three. It's going to take into effect that I've got claw ornate, 72%, uh, it's two damage a piece. All this stuff in the upper left is all the stuff that the app is doing for you, which is a really nice feature of the app. So confirm, boom, nine damage. So way more than it, more than six. You can also see that the Zealot's weakness appeared, which is Slash, which my Glimmering Wand has. So um, obviously I wanna keep this out, but we'll just say continue. And I'm gonna go again. Um, <clears throat> Let's just go again. I'm gonna attack him straight up again. So we'll drag here, Glimmering Wand again, because we know that's the best. He's got a weakness to it, and we got the same result. So I'm gonna go ahead and take on two more fatigue. Let's put one here and one here. And do one, two, three. Probably is gonna be nine again. All right, seven damage. So he blocked two of it. Again, this is done by the app. It's all dynamic. But you can see my Claw Ornate, which is an attachment I have, which is something I crafted, and we're going to cover all of that kind of stuff in my next video where I go over the market and kind of town phase, which is honestly probably most of the fun of this game. Um, all right, but Claw Ornate triggered. So if the enemy is weak to any of your attack damage types, they are afflicted, which is really nice because that means Varix now, when he attacks, is going to have a, a slight advantage. So, continue. He is afflicted. You can see here now his, if I touch on him, afflicted. It's got an X next to it, but that was a huge amount of damage done to him. But now I'm done. So, I can move. I, it's the only options I have left. Um, I could do this fatigue action, but I've got a movement, so I might as well not spend that now. I don't want to flip any cards. So let's just go ahead and I have a movement of four. Let's put myself over here so I can investigate this door and this bookshelf at the same time because I'm adjacent to them even diagonally. I can explore this bookshelf and open this door on a future turn. I've also kind of moved away from the zealot. It means Varix is almost certainly gonna be the, the point of attack here. All right, but now it is uh, Varix's turn. So, Varix, let's see, do we want to, uh, I guess technically I started the game with Riverwatch Spear. So, attack an enemy during the attack, add two, after this, flip this card, which is really nice. During your hero's turn, your an adjacent hero heals two. So I don't have anything that can shift me, so I am gonna have to use my movement to move towards this thing. So I'm gonna go from here, one, two, and I'm actually going to stop here um, just because I can reach it. With reach, instead of adjacent, you can count two spaces away. All right, and I think we'll start with attacking with our River Watch Spear. So from here, I can go up here and select River Watch Spear. I'm now rolling a blue die, and this is... Actually, no obvious successes, but I can take one fatigue, turn it into one. So let's start here. And um, actually, let's put it on this one. And then I can spend my lightning bolt either here during your attack, add plus two, and enfeeble the enemy. 
or add one, and any hero may discard one condition. Obviously, I want to do this. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say one for the plus, plus two more for the lightning bolt, so that's three. But I'm also going to go and click on status and enfeeble him. Click anywhere else so you can see we're adding enfeebled. He's already afflicted. Confirm. Oh, so close. Okay. But that was it. You can see here, if you wanted to see how all that damage was decided, you can click on the white arrow next to the damage, and you can see it was a nine base damage. Minus one was blocked. Um, so we're just going to continue. Now, uh, I've moved and I've attacked. Um, I don't feel like I need this. He's only at... Let's just refresh three. So even if I just get one, I could maybe kill him. Um, so I'm just going to simply attack him again and try and knock him out. I don't want to use Fate's Embrace yet. I don't want to waste it. So I'm just going to go back up here. We will attack him with the Riverwatch Spear again. He is enfeebled, remember, and that's perfect. That's two successes. That's all I need. I don't need to spend anything extra. Confirm. Boom. Six damage. You can see he dropped some stuff. So this stuff is just automatically added. And the rabbit foot potion recipe, which I thought I already had. Um, oh, no. Okay. See, what I was looking at earlier, this is why I needed the rabbit foot potion, is this is the advanced rabbit foot potion. So I need to create the rabbit foot potion first, where I only need one Anemos, and then I can create the advanced one with the two arrows. Okay. But I got all this other stuff. Remove the Dread Zealot. We'll just stick him up there for right now. All right, now I'm free to kind of do stuff, but I've spent my three actions. I moved and I attacked twice. So, in phase. All right, so in resolve, infection and terror. These are these two that will appear on your cards. None of us are infected or in terror right now, so we don't have to do that, but we you know, are always actively resting, we can each remove one. So let's actually want to keep that there. Um, I guess we'll just, yeah, do that. So I removed my two and that's it. Nothing else happens. Uh, it's pretty quiet now. So let's see what's in this bookshelf first. All right, books, bottles, and baubles line the three shelves all covered in dust so this is an explore action i can take two of these let's search the books okay so we gained a recipe all right a stack of parchment spills from the shelf to the floor each piece covered front and back by cramped handwriting one page is covered in a large diagram with a short note aquos and ignos are opposites the combination of which is explosive, do not combine again. The diagram looks like this. Okay, so I do know that Ignos um, is something that Cyrus has. It's, you know, his phoenix. It's basically like fire. I'm assuming Aquos is water. Hopefully we'll remember that. Little clue, little foreshadowing. Oh, and you can see here down below, I have gained one out of five lost knowledge. So... Um, I didn't even realize that was one of our quests. Our current objective is to find Professor Grayson, who just disappeared on us. One other thing I want to go ahead and point out now, which is really nice. I did not know this was a thing uh, until I started playing, but you can see here these are feats. These are um, specific actions, uh, objectives you need to complete for your individual characters, and as you do so, you will unlock stuff. You can see here for Cyrus, he wants to... Oh, okay, so the lost knowledge is his feet. Interact with a shelf. Oh, so all I have to do is interact with the shelf five times. Awesome. Um, and when I do, I gain Pursuit of Knowledge, Verge of Breakthrough skill. For uh, Varix, I want to deal additional damage using an enemy weakness. Um, so in this case, I get a recipe for a weapon enhancement. I don't like that they call everything a recipe. Um, should be plans or something like that if it's a recipe, I mean if it's a weapon, but 
that's neither here nor there. So you can see if I click on this, uh, okay, it's locked in there. Once you complete them, you actually get to choose between a couple and the next. But um, I really like that you just have these things here. It reminds me of um, Call of Duty when you would gain a new weapon. If you played with that weapon, it would have certain things you needed to do with it to unlock more weapons and advance. All right. So actually, we're going to go ahead and have... Um, Yeah, I think we're just going to have... No, let's open the door first. All right, remove the door. Okay, so here you can see me fumble around with some of the scenery. This is going to go away, possibly. These guys are all going to be in the way. And I need to get out... Three short pillars. Set of stairs. 10A. No, oh, that's 12. Ten A. Alright. So again, keeping in mind that we always want to hook up the gargoyle faces. And the fourth portion of this is going to be supported by the stairs. So we can put that like that. You can see that the third step's actually covered up. And these guys are still in the way. Let's just push all them out of the way. This game is a table hog. I'll tell you that right now. All right. So that works for the most part. My stairs are a little cattywampus because I'm going off of my dungeon play mat here. Um, we will shift the camera here in just a second. Let's see what else we want to add here. A bookcase up here, more bookcases, a chest, and a table. Enemies? Strange. Come to think of it, you didn't hear a door opening or closing when fresh screen was slipped away. All right. So you guys have kind of seen now what's going on here. Let's shift the focus more thematically on what's happening uh, with the miniatures. Um, and I'll try and hold stuff up as we move along. All right. So... Um, we investigated the bookshelf, we opened the door, our only actions left are to move, so we might as well start moving into this room. We can move for a time, one, two, three. Now, to my knowledge, the stairs count as one space. There's just one space on the stairs, there's no division on the steps, there's no line drawn. So the stairs are just one spot, but then I can choose which one of these I hop onto. Um, so I was right here in the corner, one, two, three. Yeah, well, let's just go towards the bookshelf. All right. So, Cyrus is done. What does uh, Varix want to do? Well, Varix is actually a little curious about the table. The fact that I can interact with the table. So, um, I'm not adjacent to it yet, though. So, let's go. One, two. Now, I can pause my movement. I can interact with the table. Sturdy stone table is artfully carved. There's a potted succulent and a collection of rocks and gems. Um, yeah, the succulent might bite me, so. You imagine the stones have been gathered by someone before you. So, always gaining stuff. And now I can continue my movement. Three. And really, I only have any nothing else left to do. I don't want to prepare any cards or anything like that. So, kind of a boring turn for Varix. One, two, three. Let's get some up here. All right. End phase. All right. I can refresh a card. Let's do you. You don't even have any. So we're good there. No terror. Oh, see. 
we knew they were coming eventually. Runebound Golem. So there's only one Golem in the game. So he's coming in right here, and Harbinger. One of the negatives that I will discuss in my review is that it's not super easy to determine what uh, miniature. I guess if you once you've played enough, you'll recognize them, but. Um, I wasn't super keen on who this Harbinger guy was here. Uh, the golems are pretty easy. Alright. Now this text right here is a little foreshadowing. The Harbinger hunches forward searching for the weakest among you. So, what that's probably telling me is that uh, whoever has the, he's going to target whoever has the least amount of health. So probably Cyrus. Um, but at the end of the day, if he can't reach Cyrus, he's going to attach Ver attack Varix. But what this does help with is if you if it gives you flavor text that seems like they're setting a trap for you, you know they will counterattack you in the app. Um, so we'll probably see that at some point. But pay attention to the flavor text because uh, it does make a difference. It does matter. All right, so it's back to me. I can do whatever I want. I'm thinking I maybe run into this room, do a little investigating, let them come closer to me. Uh, continue to fire from range so um, let's see Cyrus here is just going to take his movement put himself in the corner here and he's going to investigate this bookshelf and we're going to stick with let's do the baubles this time uh, dwarven firebomb okay so this is an instance where I have not crafted this but I'm getting one so I look through my stack of consumables here and um, I need to find the Dwarven Firebomb. So that's different, I almost grabbed the Fire Grenade. But I want the Rare Potion. Is it on the other side? No. Is this a trinket? Firebomb looks like, still looks to be in usable condition. Let me check my trinkets here. Or is this not even a thing? Maybe it's not even a thing. Okay. All right. Afflict each enemy within five spaces, unfortunately, and they're not. Um, and then test agility. So testing, anytime you test, I'm going to hold up my card here. So you guys can see, here's Cyrus's card. Here are his traits. These are the only four things that are ever going to be tested. You can see, unfortunately, he's not very agile. This, well, this would have been best if I had chanced the cat, but he's not here. So, agility, I'm actually going to lose one on my roll. You take two black dice, no matter what their level is, uh, and you're going to roll them out. And that's a pretty good roll. So, right now, I've got one, two, three, four successes guaranteed. Um, I can add another one here uh, with my lightning bolt and then move one from one card to another. I don't really need to do that. Um, so I've got five, but remember my agility was minus one, so I'm only four. And I don't have any way to fix that, so I'm actually gonna fail. And it burns, blows up on me. I have to uh, infect two of my cards. So this actually doesn't, nothing happens with the infection. I get to pick which two cards, including my hero card, my weapon card, my skill card. Which two get affected. The infection will happen. I'll have to deal with it at the beginning or, of each darkness phase. So um, we might want to get rid of those here soon. Okay. There are gaps and spaces where objects have been removed from this bookshelf. They look to have been carried over to a table nearby, okay? So he searched. Uh, I guess let's just go ahead and use our movement. One, two, three. Yeah, he's fine there. And then we will use our second action to search the table. All right, the diagram looks like this. I'm just gonna read this to myself quickly. Okay. So, more 
to that. And those are the three actions for Cyrus. So let's see, let's have Varix go after this chest. So he's gonna take his movement, go one, two, three, right here. Now he's adjacent to the chest. We'll draw him up to the chest. And he needs to test agility, which for him is just zero. So he's getting one, two, three, four, um, five, plus his surge ability allows him any hero may discard one condition, which is good. So I can discard one of my infected tokens. And so I'm getting five, one, two, three, four, five. Um, you're closer to opening the chest, so it's probably gonna take another, I can use my second action to test agility again. And I've got one, two, we know three. This is gonna allow me to get rid of that, which is nice. Um, I cannot use my thing here because it's during your attack and this is not an attack. This is a explore action or um, yeah, explore action. So just three, one, two, three. They are they are but we did it. We got it open. It basically just gave us a bunch of stuff, which is fine. The chest disappears off the map. Uh, but that was Varix's turn, but that's fine. We wanted them to rest up and get ready, let the enemies come closer to them. So end phase. Resolve infection and terror. We got rid of our infection. Each hero may discard one. So let's go here and nothing there. All right. So here's the Harbinger. Um, Harbinger leaps high into the air, then descends like a falcon on unsuspecting prey. Claws extend. Place the Harbinger adjacent to the hero with the moose. Oh, I don't even know if I've played against the Harbinger yet. I didn't realize this guy could fly. Uh, place the Harbinger adjacent to the hero with the most fatigue, which is Cyrus. So we knew he was targeting the, a weaker of the two. That hero infects one card and becomes the target of this activation. So, boom, I can put him anywhere adjacent. So I'm going to put him right here where uh, Varix can still reach him with his spear. Um, I have to infect one card, so we'll go back here, infecting shared pain on my skill card, and now he's hitting me for four. So that's just four damage coming at me, but I get to defend. So if we look up here on Cyrus's card, remember we are rolling an orange die for defense, and all successes just simply negate from that four. All right, well, that was this side, so just two successes. Um... I don't really have anything else I can add here, but my seven button vest allows me before defense to focus one card. Um, everything is already focused, so I might as, actually, but this is before defense, so um, I might as well use one of my focuses to see if I can't get a better result here. Um, so let's just spend my focus here. And we'll re-roll it. And so now I got one plus that. Um, yeah, it doesn't make any difference here. Um, yeah, I don't care about moving that. So just two. So I'm blocking two out of the four. So I simply take my health dial, rotate it down to five. All right. Cyrus is not supposed to be the point of attack. All right. But we're done. We're done with the Harbinger. Runebound Golem targets Cyrus. So we know he's going after Cyrus, but he's far away. So before this activation, one hero adjacent to the Runebound Golem, nobody is, becomes the target and scars one card. All right, so nobody's nobody's adjacent. If somebody was, they'd become the target. If not, he's going after Cyrus. He gets to move three and attack before he's got no range. So he simply takes one, two, three, shortest distance, and now he's done. So he doesn't get to attack anybody. All right, now um, the room back on lifts a boulder into an empty hand and turns its ruthless face towards Varix. So again, hinting at the fact that next time he's gonna do a ranged attack because he's got a boulder in his hand and Varix is gonna be the target. So we wanna keep away from this guy. Um, all right, so let's continue back to the hero phase. Now, some things to discuss here is that as we are up here higher, it doesn't gain us any advantage on range, but we can simply count one, two, technically this would be three, four, or, well, let's let's check. Let's use, 
the line of sight tool. This is where the app comes in handy. Let's check the line of sight tool, and Cyrus is way back here. Put him where she was a little bit closer. All right, so you can see that actually going over the emptiness doesn't is not allowed. So the golem is actually not in Cyrus's current line of sight. If hold on. If we put Cyrus, say, right there, it doesn't matter. If we put him on the steps, however, we're able to see the golem. So Cyrus has to get to the steps in order to aim at the golem. Um, unfortunately, right now, he is uh, impeded by the Harbinger being adjacent to him. So if you are impeded, if you are adjacent, which is tough because you only get one movement point when you go to move. Um until you kind of detach yourself from the enemy, you're stuck. So I'm going to have Varix go first, and Varix is simply going to open up with with, bleh, with his River Watch Spear, because he's got reach, and he's going to attack this thing. Yeah, I don't have anything that can help. Um, lightning Bolt, okay. I don't have any way to reroll. So, I will simply use the Lightning Bolt on my Riverwatch Spear here during your attack, add two, and enfeeble the enemy. So, status, he'll be enfeebled, and two, confirm, all right, seven damage. So we know he is weak to pierce, which unfortunately, A, I'm just gonna keep whacking him with my Riverwatch Spear. So, now, at this point, I'm gonna use Fate's Embrace. Attack an enemy, during the attack, add plus two to the successes, and after the attack, flip this card. So that is an action. So let's roll out our thing. And you can see we have one success, but we got two more. Um, I guess I need to come back over here and go through all these steps again, but I'm getting three successes, and I can take on one fatigue, two, um, Okay, no lightning bolts, which is unfortunate. Um, what I am gonna do here, so we've hit this guy for four. One, two, three, four, confirm. Oh, look at that, boom. So I got 12 base damage, four plus four for being his weakness, and he didn't block any. So I actually took him out, bam, perfect. Harbinger is reduced. Okay. He's got to be adjacent. So remove the Harbinger. Um, what's nice here, I believe, and let me just test this. If I go over here and investigate the table, even though I already have, yes, correct. Uh, you can see that in case you forget, uh, it tells you, you basically have already been over here, you've already done this, you may perform an additional action. So it's telling me, hey, you've already been over here. Uh, let's pick something else. So remember, I don't want to run up to the golem. Um, Varix has a movement he could make, but the golem's probably got like a movement of three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So let's actually, yeah, move Varix back one step. All right, so Varix is done. Now let's move Cyrus. And if we can put Cyrus adjacent, which we will, he's... His Phoenix is getting in the way, but he's on that backspace right next, right in front of the bookshelf. All right, so that's his movement. Um, next turn, Varix can heal him at the start of the turn. So, all right. Um, let's see here. All right, let's investigate this. Let's search. Uh, well, well, what's a mud potion. Is okay, so this is what I was thinking earlier with the Dwarven uh, bomb. But this is an instance where I gain the mud potion. Now what's interesting is that the uh, mud potion is just a single card. So you know that this is never something that I'm going to be able to craft, I don't think. Because there's only ever one of them. But I now get to add this to my inventory here uh, and use it. And I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be able to save it. So, all right, 
So we did that. Let's now, um, yeah, I don't wanna be infected. I do wanna heal. So I'm actually, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take shared pain. I'm gonna make this my third action. Heal one for each fatigue on this card, then flip this card. So I'm losing the focus, but I'm also losing the infection and taking off the fatigue and healing for one. It's not much, but it's not bad either. And all this just goes away. All right. And we are done. End phase. Let's see what the golem's going to do. Um, actually, everybody's cleared up. We're good. Target Varix. The room mount golem slings the boulder forward with what distance it can manage. So um, it's going to move to throw for three. So that's, that's even better. He goes one, two. He stops here. He can get to one, two, three. He can't reach us. All right, so he's done. Uh, your foes hunt for a weakness they cannot find. There's no tactics, so no flavor text to give us. Saving. Let me see. He's got 36 health. All right. So now I think it's time to whoop up on this guy. Um... Let's see, Varix is gonna start off by taking two fatigue. During your turn, you are an adjacent hero, heals two. So, let's get Cyrus back up to full health. Um, and I guess I would love to, one, two, three. I'm gonna to have to stick with the Riverwatch Spear because I can't get right adjacent to him but it's time to time to move one two three so i'm now two spaces away i can use my river watch spear and we are just going to go for it so river watch spear roll in the blue we got uh we need to take a fatigue and then i can add two and enfeeble the enemy so that's one, two, three. And I'm also going to play Destiny's Call here during your another hero's attack. Doom the enemy for one fatigue. Um, yep. All right. So one, two, three, and he's going to be doomed. Oh, he's implacable. Immune to all statuses. Okay, so I'm not going to bother with that. All right. That's a bummer. damage continue okay and I guess I'm just gonna go ahead and again with the river watch spear or no maybe I should back up yeah just cancel that let's back up and spread them out here make him pick one of us all right so I use my last movement to move out of the way Cyrus now can he hit him one two three four no he has nowhere to shift um, so one, two, three, four, he could get right up in there. So what I'm actually going to do here is use my prepared token on my glimmering wand to flip her for free. So I've got my evergreen staff active. I'm going to take my four movement to go one, two, three, four, get right up in this guy's face and attack him with my evergreen staff. Two successes during your attack each plus no nope. um, nope. so do I want to re-roll no let's just see if he's susceptible to crush nope oh he is okay so he's susceptible to crush um, but what I'm gonna do is Turn tail and run. One, two, three, four. Put myself back here again. All right. Play defensively. End phase. Discard one. Uh, let's go from here. No terror. Uh, he's targeting Cyrus. Before activation, one here adjacent to the room. No. Nope. So he's moving three. Perfect. So one, two, um, three, if I put him right here, Variks can reach him. 
Um, but he's not adjacent to anybody, so he cannot attack us, so he's done. The damaged golem moves wildly and erratically, twitching and cracking as it flails its limbs about with terrifying force. Okay, not sure what's happening there. All right, so... <clears throat> Varix is going to continue to use his Riverwatch Spear. Uh, it's really, he's basically just, we just need to get rid of this guy, so. Oh, the flailing runebound golem swings wide with its spear using its reach to strike you first. Oh, are you serious? Suffer five, agility negates. So I'm going to roll two black dice, and I get four. Four, so I have to suffer one. This is the first time I've taken a hit, though, so I'm alright with that. Alright, so now I can continue. Now I get to use my Riverwatch Spear. Now I get to roll this blue die, and I'm getting one success um, plus two. Yep, none of this other stuff is worthless. So one, two, three. Confirm, seven damage, continue. We're just gonna go right back at it again. Oh no. Uh, but yeah, we need, it's all right. Okay, so really good roll. One, two, three, four. I just simply need to take one fatigue somewhere and I've now blocked all of that. All right. So now I can um, roll these two again, and just one of those. I don't have any focus, but I can use it to attack two and enfeeble the enemy. Uh, one, two, confirm, he can't be enfeebled, he's done. Okay, is this guy going to continue to strike me with Cyrus, or is Cyrus going to use He's going to flip to his evergreen staff here. Yeah. I think let's... F no, because he's, he's weak to the evergreen staff, so let's do it. Let's move one here. We could end this guy right now. He's only got 11. So, yeah. Ugh. Agility negates. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Minus one, so I have to spend one fatigue to get there. All right, but I blocked it all. Continue. Let's just end this guy. Come on. Come on. One, two. I can make it a third one. Um, but put this here with my evergreen staff, I can spend two fatigue and convert my one plus. Oh, no, and a hero within three spaces heals one. No, that's not quite as good as I thought it was. During your attack for each plus converted to a thing, a hero within you heals one space. No. All right, so yeah, we're just three successes here. One, two, three, is that gonna be enough to do it? Yes! Gold Bloom Lacing Trigger. Which just hasn't dropped it. Ooh, I get the Antidote Potion Recipe, which is nice. So now I can craft that. I actually gained an Antidote Potion, but I was gonna lose it, but now I have the recipe for future business. Now, and now, that, that will that will be oh, and a Forg. Forgic Haft Recipe added. Um, new weapons Greed pays off. 50 gear, 50 gold. All right, but we did it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is an excellent stopping point here. Um, I have showed off uh, some gameplay, some how the app interacts with everybody. And so we're going to stop here. And we're going to pick up the remainder of this playthrough in an extended playthrough video if you want to see how it all pans out. If you want to see some more action, if you don't care about the spoilers, feel free to check out um, my next video, which will be the remainder of this playthrough here. Um, however, if you just wanted to see a little action, you don't want to see how this scenario ends, um, I won't be offended if you don't watch the next video. But um, 
if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a thumbs up and um, be sure to keep an eye out if you are interested to see what happens in the app between scenarios uh, when you're back at home, in town, things like that, which is a very fun part of the game. Um, that will be coming after the extended playthrough. So I will be showing off that. It's going to be its own separate video, and that way you'll be able to see all the crafting stuff, all the equipping, and all that stuff that happens in the app um, between scenarios. So be sure to check that out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell icon so you can be notified when those videos drop on YouTube. Uh, once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.